Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at the mountains. I feel like there's two types of developers right now. Ones that want to run AI locally and ones that just want to code, you know, like the way they used to do it way back in 2022. And today I'm at the brand new micro center in Phoenix, Arizona to pick out some developer laptops and then take it back to the office to do some dev tests. Let's go. Whoa. <laughs> this is way bigger than my whole micro center in Rockville. Look at this place. Let's keep going. Wow, look at this build your own section. GPUs, motherboard wall, cases. Oh, this is the 9000, I just built them one of these. Networking, they have more than just ubiquity, but this is a pretty cool display. Oh, this is kind of cool. You can pick out which keys you like, which switches. I don't know how I type on one of these. All right, I'm here to talk about laptops and <laughs> I'm getting a little distracted. I'm like a kid in a candy store over here. Here is the laptop section, and it just keeps going and going and going. Dell has their own department. Now I'm looking for laptops that are around $1,000 range, so I'm looking for sales and deals. Let's see if we find any. Now this is gonna be the hard part. Depending on whether you're doing local AI for coding assistance or image generation, or if you don't care about any of that stuff, pricing is gonna be very different. Why? I'll get into that in a moment, but check this out. These are the sales that I'm talking about. They got huge discounts on all these machines. If you see a yellow sticker, it's even more of a discount. I love that. And yeah, there's a lot to pick from, but today I'm gonna to focus on the Lenovo side of things. ThinkPads have a very special place in my heart because my first laptop was a ThinkPad. I did some SharePoint development back in the day on that thing. Now here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about when it comes to AI dev versus not AI dev. This is $3,000. Now, of course, it also has some pretty high-end specs there, so it's not for nothing. 64 gigs of RAM, two one terabyte solid state drives, Ultra 9, 275, 5090. Now, here's another NVIDIA-based machine with pretty good specs, but it's still a little bit out of my range. But I sort of wanted to let you know that that's what we're looking at if we're talking about AI development. We're talking about a more expensive computer, or if it's the same price computer, more of that budget is gonna go towards a graphics card for AI. So for developers that are gonna be doing AI, this is the machine right here that's gonna be way under our budget and really, really good. I'll tell you why. 16 gigs of memory. The demands are getting pretty high for memory for developers, but you still don't need that much unless you're running virtualization, a lot of Docker containers. I'd say 16 gigabytes is still a good starting point. Eight, eight is a little bit too low right now. Now this does have only eight gigs of VRAM for that graphics card. You're not gonna be able to run big models on this, but you will be able to start NVIDIA-based CUDA development on this box. If that's where you're headed, good way not to spend a ton of money and still be able to learn on a machine like that. And it's got a 512 gig SSD, so you're probably gonna wanna pick up an external drive at some point very soon, maybe even today. There's one that I'm looking for that they just don't have out. I think they only had one in stock from what I saw on the website. I just don't see it out. Let me ask the staff here. All right, so I saw this on their website earlier today. And yeah, my daily driver is the MacBook Pro still. All right, listen up, you people that are not doing AI. This is the one I was looking for, Lenovo ThinkPad T16. It's not on display here, but look at these specs. The Core Ultra 7 255, that's a U by the way, not an H. So it makes a bigger difference there. I'll show you why. 32 gigabytes of RAM, that is really nice right there. One terabyte SSD. This is a decent developer machine right here. Productivity machine. Can you do AI with it? Yeah, it's got Intel integrated graphics, but you're not gonna be on the Nvidia stack. And for reasons I mentioned earlier, it could be something you want or something you don't want. Now, since we're on that subject, a little bit of an aside here, MacBooks are a really good deal, especially last year's models or the models before that, or MacBook Airs. And even their brand new M5 MacBook Pro is 160 bucks off. But we're looking at only PC laptops today. See my other videos for MacBook reviews. Now, I might've found a machine that actually is good for both worlds, but it has some drawbacks. That's the Lenovo IdeaPad Pro 5i. It's a 16-inch laptop with an 
OLED display, so it's gonna have a really nice crisp display. It's got a Core Ultra 7 255H, so that's gonna give you six performance cores in there. Really nice processor. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5050, so if you are gonna be doing AI, then that's gonna get you in. It's a low-end card, but you're gonna be able to use the CUDA stack for development. But it's got that one drawback, and that's 16 gigs of RAM, especially if you're gonna be doing containerization, and that's why the ThinkPad with 32 gigs of RAM gives me something to think about. They're both exactly the same price, but the IdeaPad is actually on a nice sale, 400 bucks off. The one other thing I wanna compare is that processor. The IdeaPad has six performance cores. This one only has two, it's the 255U. So the T16, my guess is going to last you a little bit longer because it's got a CPU that sips, but also your compilations are probably not gonna be as fast as the 255H on the IdeaPad. I think it's about that time to grab one of these and test it out back at the office. Now, besides the laptop, I'm gonna pick out a couple of extra things I need to take with me on a trip. Two terabytes? One terabyte? Come on. Nice to have choices, but what happened to my 16 gigabyte ones? 32 is the smallest I can get now. By the way, these are probably my favorite here, the ones that can spin between USB-C and USB-A but it looks like 64 is the smallest variety. Oop, I got the last one. You're gonna need an external drive with that computer too because uh, it's probably not enough these days. I never leave home without a charging block anymore, so gotta have one of these. I have a bunch of U-Green ones that I travel with, but I've never seen a flat one. That might actually be better for packing and for laptop bags. Oh wait, that's gonna definitely fall off the wall. Uh, never mind. I'm gonna try this cute one right here. This one's got USB-C and USB-A, and it's 100 watts, and this will probably stick to the wall, probably. A dock is a good thing to have, but these are a little bit too big. I wanna go something really light, not even a dock, but just kind of a extra USB ports. Ah, uh, here we go. This is why I like going into the store. Open box, probably perfect, and it's 39 bucks instead of 49. Hey. I'll take it. I decided to go with this laptop. This is Andre, he helped me out with the laptop. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't know. That's always the weirdest part, man. <laughs> this is Andre, he works in the laptop department and other places, he helped me out today. Andre, tell him about your YouTube channel. I make gaming content. My name on YouTube and on every platform is at Mr. Sipe, M-R-C-I-P-E. And I make uh, Valorant content, I do coaching and I do tips and tricks. Check out his channel. Let's grab that laptop. Thanks for your help. All right. This is my first laptop ever. And this is the ThinkPad W510. W means workstation. I got this all the way back in 2010 and it still works. I made a whole video about it. So what do you think I got? Well, I went a little conservative and I picked up a series that has a long history. This is the T series. I got the T16. Thanks for choosing our products. Instructions, cables. I love the minimalistic approach that Lenovo has. They focus on the product and the quality instead of boxes. All right, I guess I'm the first one to open this package. That's a good sign. If it's brand new, right? This is the ThinkPad T16 Gen 4 in Eclipse Black. Many of you know I prefer larger screen laptops and this fits the bill. This is a big business class ThinkPad. Even with a 16 inch screen, it's still pretty manageable. 1,938 grams. And this one I went overseas with many times in a backpack, 2,943 grams. Lock and load, baby. <laughs> Should lock that battery before it falls out. That's happened to me. There's like two of these that could fit into the W height wise. The display is a 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It's got a matte anti-glare finish on it. It's a very much work all day screen. Check out these ports. This is definitely a machine made for work. Two USB-A ports, two Thunderbolt ports, HDMI, headphone, and... <laughs> This is the interesting one right here. It's got a full-size ethernet port on it. That's becoming more and more rare these days. The old one had an ethernet port and a phone port on it. 
This one was an Intel Core i7. This one is an Intel Core Ultra 7. No proprietary plug, plug it into a USB-C port. Let's turn it on. Now, like I mentioned before, this is the Ultra 7 255U. So it's not gonna give you that high performance that we've come to expect from the H line of uh, Intel Core Ultras, but this should be more efficient and last you all day long. As far as performance, I'll check in a bit. But what's really important here is that 32 gigs of memory. It also has a Gen 4 NVMe SSD. By the way, 32 gigs is the sweet spot, I think, for work, especially if you're running more extensive development workflows using Docker containers, for example, or virtual machines. Hey, they actually redesigned the red nipple. That thing is affectionately known as. Can you imagine somebody's job is to work on the red Nipple has been around for ages in Lenovo laptop. Your responsibility is to update the red nipple. You know, give it a fresh but, vibe. But the, the, it's, the, it's the, uh. I'm not sure what aspect ratio this was, maybe 16 by nine, but I remember distinctly feeling a little cramped on this screen and a little dark. Look how much brighter the new one is. But Alex, you're comparing it to a 15 year old computer, 16 almost. Yeah, so? I paid over $3,000 for this computer in 2010, so it better be good. And it better hold up. I think it has. Over 15 years, it still works, and it works pretty decently, but I'm about to find out maybe how maybe not that great it is. Hmm. I think I like the old keyboard a little bit better, but it's kind of interesting that they kept three mouse keys alive all this time. This one actually had the three on top, plus two down here for convenience. Fingerprint reader. All right, speedometer 2.0. This is more of a JavaScript test of how your JavaScript applications will work in a browser. And I don't mean yours. I mean, the ones they wrote, these are basically to-do applications, lists, charts, uh, different frameworks like Angular, React, and so on. <laughs> wow, look how fast this one's going compared to this one. Oh my gosh, this one's done. Hey, 34 is actually a pretty good score. I'm kind of surprised. The second generation of the Intel Core Ultra chips is actually pretty decent. It's not only efficient, but it's pretty performant. This one. <laughs> now I will set this up for development um, in a separate video. So don't miss that if you're interested. I haven't done that for a while. And I think this one will be interesting to do that on because I also want to set up Linux. Almost done. I've never had Spadawa to take this long before. 3.35. Oh, I wrote JavaScript on this computer back in the day. There just weren't really any frameworks around except for jQuery, which was not a framework, a library, okay? Don't give me a hard time about that. Pretty common test of hardware these days is Geekbench. And if it's good enough for DOS Dude 1, it's good enough for me. Geekbench 6 running on both of these. Uh, I'll probably have to take a lunch break before this one finishes. But in the meantime, I wanted to mention something about the trackpad. The old trackpad is actually really interesting. It's not a diving board design. It's not a haptic design way before that time, but it does work very well. It's really nice and tactile and it's small. I wish it was bigger, but it's super responsive and it's got this little micro dot texture. You're supposed to be able to scroll stuff as well on the edges here, which I never really used, but because you can't press down on it, that's why you need the extra buttons here. The new one doesn't have those extra buttons because you can press down on the touchpad and it is the old diving board design, but it's not terrible. I've seen way worse implementations. This one has nice give to it. It's just clicky enough. One thing I don't like is when there's a numpad. I don't like numpads. Complain if you want in the comments. I think they're useless. We have numbers up here and it's a laptop, come on. But whenever there is a numpad, usually what manufacturers do is they shift the trackpad to the left and that's what happened here. I don't like that. I like my trackpad to be dead center so I can easily locate it when I'm looking for it. Having my hands kind of off center is just a little weird to me on a laptop. Plus after a while, you might have some palm prints on it and it's gonna be in these areas instead of on the edges. This one has a pretty centered trackpad. No numpad. Well. Nice. Um, I can understand why the old one will have 312 single core score and 879 multi-core score. It does have one processor with four cores. Yeah, that's all it has is four cores. So yeah, it's gonna be a little slow, plus it's 15 years old. But the new one, hmm, that one puzzles me. 
2276 for single core and 9472 for multi core. That is a very low multi core score, especially because we've got 12 cores on there. But remember what I said this being a U chip? It only has two performance cores. The rest of the cores, the 10 other cores, are just efficiency cores. So that could have something to do with it. It could also be that it's a brand new machine. And when you first set up a Windows machine, it tends to do a lot of crazy things in the background. So that's probably what's happening here. This is not a super scientific thing, but more like a first impressions thing. And first impressions, not a great score. I had higher hopes. The machine does feel nice and snappy, but it is a brand new machine. After a year or so, things change. Uh, if you're watching this a year from now, let me know and maybe I'll do another test of this thing to see how it went on for a year. Here's a score of me running it the second time. Well, I guess that's the score because I debloated the machine. I let it run. I did all the updates. I let it settle down. It is a pretty low multi-core score indeed. So I thought, okay, uh, should we continue with the tests? And the answer is yes, because even though this machine didn't get a very high multi-core score, it did pretty well. Check this out. I ran my .NET compilation project. So this is an example of a compiled code. I'll also do interpreted code in a second. This thing is called large project and it generates 100,000 namespaces and classes, ensuring that they're all different so they're gonna be compiled and not squirreled away by the compiler. Make that compiler work. And I got 104 seconds for the build here, which is actually better than both the Lunar Lake machine I tested, different brand, Dell, and the X Elite machine that I tested from Dell as well. Those are both XPS machines. I'll actually link to that video down below if you wanna check that out. But this did better than both of them, even though the other machines had higher multi-core Geekbench scores. I also like to do this Mandel broad test on Benchmark's Game. It's a website that lists a bunch of languages and algorithms and compares how fast they are. From here, I sometimes do the C-sharp one, but I mostly run this one, Python 3 number seven. This is a pretty good test because it uses all the cores available all at the same time and it's interpreted let's go hey well i'm not supposed to run this one in powershell i'm running this one in wsl excuse me and of course now that i'm in linux i have to switch my syntax all right Finally, my apologies, switching between Linux and Windows context. By the way, this is VS Code running in Windows, but the folders and the files are actually in Linux on WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out that other video I created about this machine where I set it up for development. And what we're running is this Python algorithm right here, the one I just showed you on Benchmarks Games. You can see that it's really taking a pretty big hit on the CPU here. The fans are spinning up, the machines is heating up. 48 seconds. Again, that's better than both of those machines. These aren't the highest scores I've ever seen, but they're decent. I wonder why I got such a low Geekbench score. Don't know. Overall, I like it. I don't like the keyboard. That's all I'll say. Not used to this kind of keyboard. Not my thing. But I like the build quality. The performance is pretty decent. What do you think? Should I test other Lenovo machines out? Maybe I will. If you wanna see the Dell XPS video that I did, watch that right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.